This video is going to cover the basics of dynamic images in active demand. A dynamic image is an object that represents a series of images. Each image in the dynamic image object has its own context query. A dynamic image as well has a URL. This URL can be used wherever you are using any type of image. When the image is referenced from any external client, Active Demand will look at the context query, serve up the correct image based on the context that has been presented to Active Demand. For example, maybe you have an email where the header of the email is referencing an image of a city. If the email is opened in, let's say, New York, maybe you'll show an image of the New York skyline. Or if it's opened in the UK, maybe you will show a background image of London. So the idea is that the image will be replaced based on the context of the person requesting the image. A dynamic image is similar to a dynamic content block in that there is a query associated with a specific block. The difference between a dynamic block and a dynamic image is the image can be used anywhere, whereas a dynamic block can only be used in a landing page served by Active Demand or a embedded content inside a WordPress site. Dynamic images in Active Demand are under the image library. So you go to Assets, Image Library. And you can upload images, you can uh, use images out of your existing library, etc. You start by clicking the New Dynamic Image button. This will create a dynamic image. A dynamic image has a default image that will always display if the queries fail for all the rest of the images. A dynamic image as well has a public URL. Again, this public URL can be referenced anywhere outside of active demand or the image can be pulled into a block just like a regular image in active demand. And each version of the image again has its own targeting, which is a contextual targeting based on the person requesting the image. For example, here I have a picture of New York, and I'm going to put this as the image for United States. The targeting here, I'm going to look at current activity, which is the person requesting the image, equals where the GOIP country equals United States. And then I have another image, and I'll call this one Canada. And the targeting here will be set to if the current activity, GOIP, country equals Canada. And basically anybody who references the URL for this dynamic image in Canada will get the picture of Calgary. Each version can be active or inactive. Basically any inactive image, it will not be part of the query. You can use longitude and latitude ranges to cover areas of a specific country. To add a new image, I just add a version here. I click here. I'll grab one of my static images. And then I'm going to call this one UK. And I'm going to save it. I'm going to edit the targeting. And then here I'm going to do current activity country equals United Kingdom. And I will activate it. It's important to note that the queries are checked in order of the versions. So when somebody references this specific URL, it will check the first version's query. If that fails, it goes to the next version's query. If that fails, it goes to the final version's query. And if this fails, again, just the default image will be displayed. You can reorder these objects by just dragging and dropping the rows on the stack. Now that I have my dynamic image, I can take this URL and reference it, reference it anywhere that, again, a, an image can be embedded. 
This concludes the video on dynamic images in Active Demand. Hopefully you've seen that it is very easy to add dynamic contextual content to your emails and your web pages.